Welcome to our exploration of communication. Today, we'll cover its meaning, process, models, principles, ethics, and examples. Communication. What is communication? The word communication originates from the Latin term communicatio, which means sharing or importing. This Latin word itself is derived from communicare, a verb that means to make common or to share. The root word communis means common or shared by all. Therefore, the essence of communication lies in the act of making information, ideas, or feelings common between individuals. This historical etymology highlights the fundamental purpose of communication as a means of creating mutual understanding and connection among people. In short, we define communication as transmission, interpretation, and exchange of information. Now, if it's the exchange, it means there is more than one party involved. This is where what we call the key components of communication comes in. The key components of communication generally include the sender, the message, the channel, the receiver, and feedback. Sender. The process begins with the sender, who initiates the communication. This individual has a message they want to convey. The sender is responsible for encoding their thoughts into a comprehensible format. This involves choosing the right words, tone, and mode of communication. Message. The message is the content of the communication, the information, idea, or feeling that is being shared. It can be verbal or nonverbal and can take various forms, such as spoken words, hidden texts, body language, or visual symbols. The clarity and effectiveness of the message depend on how well it is encoded. Channel. The channel refers to the medium through which the message is transmitted. This could be face-to-face -face conversation, telephone, email, text, message, social media, or any other medium. The choice of channel affects how the message is received and interpreted. For example, sensitive topics are often better communicated in person rather than through text. Receiver. The receiver is the individual or group who receives the message. The effectiveness of communication depends on how well the receiver decodes the message. Decoding involves interpreting and understanding the message as intended by the sender. Feedback. Feedback is the response from the receiver to the sender. It indicates whether the message has been understood as intended and can include verbal responses, body language, or other reaction. Feedback help the sender assess the effectiveness of their communication and make adjustment if necessary. This is the flowchart that will show us how the communication process works. So basically, the sender encodes and transmits the message through a channel to the receiver who then decodes it and provides feedback. This communication model helps us understand how these elements interact. Effective communication relies on several principles. Clarity, attention, feedback, informality, consistency, timeliness, and adequacy. Principle of Clarity emphasizes making information, communication, or content as understandable as possible. This involves using simple language and concept to avoid confusion, organizing information logically so it follows a coherent sequence, or using precise terms and specific details to prevent unclear ideas. By applying this principle, you ensure that the people who are meant to receive your message can understand it. 
principle of attention in communication refers to the idea that for a message to be effectively received and understood, it must capture and hold the audience's attention. This principle emphasizes that communicators need to engage their audience by making their message relevant, interesting, and clear. The principle of feedback in communication involves responding to Sunday's message to indicate how it be received. Feedback clarifies misunderstandings, allows for message adjustments, and confirms whether the message was understood correctly, making communication more effective. The principle of informality in communication refers to using a relaxed and natural style to facilitate easier and more open interactions. This principle encourages a conversational tone and approach, which can make communication more approachable and engaging. It creates a more comfortable exchange of ideas. The principle of consistency in communication involves maintaining alignment and stability in messages. This means that information should be consistent across different communications and sources to avoid confusion and ensure reliability. It ensures that the message aligns with previous communication and remains stable over time. The principle of timeliness in communication emphasizes delivering messages at the right moment to ensure their relevance and usefulness. It involves writing information promptly, avoiding delays, and addressing issues when they are most relevant. The principle of adequacy in communication involves ensuring that the information provided is sufficient and comprehensive to meet the needs of the recipients. It means delivering enough detail and context for the message to be fully understood and for the listeners to take appropriate action. It addresses all necessary aspects of the topic to avoid gaps or understanding. involves the moral principles guiding how we share information. Key aspects include truthfulness, integrity, respect, and fairness. The purpose of communication ethics is to guide behavior in interactions to ensure they are conducted with integrity, honesty, and respect. It aims to build trust, prevent harm, and promote fairness. Transparency and Accountability in Communication Humans communicate through verbal methods like speaking and writing. Nonverbal cues such as body language and facial expressions and visual tools like image and charts. Active listening and digital channels like emails and social media also play key roles. Animals communicate through vocalization, body language, chemical signals, visual displays, and physical touch. Examples include birds singing or chirping, dogs wagging their tails, ants using pheromones, and peacocks displaying feathers. Plants don't have complex sensory or nervous system like animals do, but odd as it sounds, plants can communicate with each other. Just like animals, plants produce all kinds of chemical signals in response to their environments and they can share those signals with each other.